The real secret to YouTube success is not what you think if you want to grow a channel in 2024. And if I could start my channel over, I'd be following four crucial steps to getting my first 1,000, 10,000, or even 100,000 subscribers. And as a quick teaser to what this video is about, if I started over, it wouldn't just be about, oh, I just need to be more consistent. I've audited thousands of channels, and I've talked to top creators like Jenny Hoyos and Josh Strife Hayes. I've even built channels myself, and totaling all those subscribers, it's well over 100,000. And throughout all of this, I've discovered four strategies that separate the channels who blow up from the ones who get stuck. So today, I just wanted to break those down for you in a bit of a blueprint for your YouTube growth going forward. Before we get into the first one, I'm going to tell you a bit of a story about someone you may have heard of called Joshua Bell. One day, this classical musician walks into the metro station carrying their $3.5 million violin. They begin playing, and over the next 43 minutes, thousands of people are just rushing by. Most of them just walked on by, carrying on with their commute, and never stopped to appreciate what was going on. By the end, only seven people had stopped to actually listen. Now, Bell regularly sells out concert halls, and the seats are like $100 per. That day, though, Bell made $32. That was it. Now, the viral interpretation to this is that, wow, people just don't stop and appreciate the beauty around them. We're all just too busy. But the real lesson here, at least as it relates to YouTube channels, I think, is about audience alignment. Bell's talent, undeniable. But it's the context here that matters. This day, the audience was rushed commuters just trying to get to work. That is the first lesson that I want to talk about. It's understanding your audience. Your YouTube channel is your stage, and your YouTube videos are your performances. If you don't understand who you're creating content for, then it can just as easily go unappreciated, even if it's the best video ever made. In fact, that's exactly what happened to travel vloggers Vicky and Josh. When they first moved to Spain, their videos resonated with an audience who was interested in retiring abroad. But after relocating to the Far East, their content no longer resonated with their retired demographics' interests. Their views plummeted so hard that it actually caused them to start a brand new channel for a brand new audience. This new channel catered to a younger audience, interested in traveling for the sake of the adventure of it all, right? They're not trying to retire. The turnaround here, though, was incredible. They quickly surpassed their old channel's performance. We actually talked to Vicky and Josh in this video here. We covered all the different lessons they learned. I'd highly recommend it. But just remember that the finest content can go completely unrecognized if it is not hitting with the right audience. Understanding who our content is for is only one piece of the puzzle. We also need to understand how to make content that actually resonates with the audience. So how can you find ideas that are sure to land thousands, if not millions of views, instead of maybe the usual 120 that you're getting. Sorry, not you specifically, but that does seem to be a number a lot of creators stagnate at. Have you ever noticed that the top creators like Eric and Mr. Beast seem to get over a million views no matter what they do? Yeah, they've built up an audience, but even they're gonna have videos that sometimes do better than others. But still, millions of views all the time is no fluke, and it's not just luck either. What they're doing is a bit of strategic borrowing. They don't just create, they curate, and they look for ideas that are already resonating with the audience that they're trying to speak to. I'll break this down for you. When it comes to creating YouTube content, maybe reinventing the wheel every single time is not the best approach. It's important to try to find ideas that already work. For example, if you wanted to become a chef one day, you're learning how to cook still, you're not gonna like try to create some brand new dish that no one's ever heard of. You're probably gonna take someone else's ideas and you're going to adapt them slowly over time until suddenly you're inspired enough to make a dish so good everyone else is trying to copy. I'm saying that to say I wanna make it clear that it's important not to straight up rip someone else's work, but there are videos, even outside your own niche, that you could be looking at for inspiration. And if you are going out there and looking for some inspiration and you stumble upon some videos, how do you know if those are the right ones for you to kind of follow in the footsteps of? Well, one proven way to do this is to look for outlier videos from channels that maybe have a low subscriber count, but they have a video that's gotten hundreds of thousands of views. And if you find two or three videos like that, then you know you're onto something. By validating that the content you wanna make is already proven to work, you're not limiting your creativity, you're challenging it. What you're trying to do is meet the audience where they're at, and then make some content that not only lands, but sticks the landing. You wanna make these ideas your own, but beware of a common pitfall, which is focusing on the what without understanding the why. To truly leverage a viral idea, you need to understand what made it work in the first place. Was it a clickbaity title? Was it a gripping thumbnail? Or was it the sheer novelty of the idea? Dissecting these elements allows you to understand the psychology of what's going on behind the content, and then it's way easier to make it your own. There's a thin but crucial line between inspiration and imitation. So I can't stress enough that the key here is to take an idea that resonates with you and you think would resonate with your audience and give it a unique twist. Enhance, merge, and even combine ideas here to make something new and fresh. But finding that killer idea and dissecting it and breaking it down is still 
just the start. Before we record anything, let's do a bit more groundwork. I know what it's like to have an idea that you just love and you want to jump on right away. However, there is something I wish I knew a lot sooner before I made those mistakes. When you're trying to set a channel focus or maybe a focus on a new series you're doing, you want to do something sustainable, something that you could repeat over and over again almost infinitely. What do I mean? Well, let's say you jump into a new channel, but you don't have a long lasting topic and theme to follow. It's kind of like starting a marathon by sprinting as hard as you can out of the gate. When the race starts, you might be in first place for maybe 10, 15 minutes, but you're gonna gas out really hard and find yourself way in the back of the pack when the race is done. Think of your favorite long running TV show, right? What made it so engaging after the first season? These shows often have a premise that's really rich and can be explored over a long period of time. There's a lot of different plot lines, different characters to develop, and this can keep them busy for years. So if you want a channel that grows beyond 1,000 subscribers to eventually get 10,000 or 100,000, then that's kind of what you need to be thinking about. Too many creators start out really strong with a new thing and then kind of fizzle out. And I think it's because they don't ask themselves the question, what if I'm successful? Can you see yourself making that content a year from now, five years from now? If the answer is yes, then you're on the right track. But if the answer is no, then maybe this is a cool idea, but you need to be ready to keep thinking of cool ideas because what you're gonna do is bring in a bunch of new people excited to see more and you're not gonna be able to give them more. I've seen this happen with gaming channels a lot, actually. Depending on the type of channel you have, the games you're playing, there's so many different things you can do because you see someone else do this incredible thing where you're like, I wanna do that in this other game. And so, the creator often rushes to do that. And then the video blows up because turns out that thing the other creator was doing, that was an outlier. That was a viral hit for them and people wanted more of it. So you become one of the creators that does give the audience more of what they want. It's just that they're getting it from multiple channels and you're not really building a solid community around that. The types of channels I'm thinking of often do like tutorial style content and one day they see a fun gaming challenge and so they do that, but then they try and go back to their tutorials and they're disappointed because they're back to getting the views they were getting before. So if you're first starting out, I would say you should map out your first 10 to 20 videos and see how easily those ideas kind of flow. You can certainly jump on an idea that's fresh and exciting to you and really fun, but can you find a few more like it so that you can keep that momentum going? If you are gonna plan things out ahead of time, one thing to consider is to not be too rigid with your strategy. Leave room to adapt based on the feedback you get from your audience and then your own creative inspirations and whims as well. In order to grow, it's really important to stay agile as a creator, just as much as it's important to plan things out too. Sorry, that's YouTube, finding a balance. But if it works and you start to gain some traction, the growth spurts you have won't be small. Imagine going from 100 subscribers to 1,000 subscribers in record time. If you keep the momentum up, 5,000 subscribers, 10,000 subscribers, all that's right around the corner. Each new milestone you hit, you're picking up not just new viewers along the way, but a whole new audience that doubled the size of your previous audience or tripled the size of your previous audience, and they have their own interests and passions. So yes, start with the fundamentals, but also find a balance and stay agile. Speaking of fundamentals, there's one piece of advice you've definitely heard about growing a channel, but I'd be willing to bet that some of you have misinterpreted this advice because I also certainly have. And that misinterpretation may have already sabotaged your early YouTube success if you're anything like I was. Before I reveal it though, let me ask you a question. Do you want a casual relationship with YouTube or a serious one? By casual, I mean you kind of post whenever you feel like it. Maybe you got a little inspiration and you're just having fun. And I want to stress, there's nothing wrong with that. If casual uploads scratch your itch and you're getting a lot out of that based on your goals, that's awesome. But for those who said, I want a serious relationship with YouTube, then things for you are a bit more difficult. It means that you need to make a commitment to showing up on YouTube regularly. Because honestly, that's what it takes to build something at the speed you probably want to build it. You need to be there for your audience. And that's the piece of advice I'm sure you've heard a thousand times about YouTube. Be consistent. Picture this, you've committed to a new diet, something completely different from how you're eating right now. You start off strong by throwing away everything in your fridge that doesn't fit this new diet, going out and buying a whole bunch of stuff you've never cooked with before, but hey, you found a few cool recipes, I'm just gonna buy everything I can and I'm gonna eat like this forever now. Then imagine at first, things are going great. You're feeling better, you're sticking to the diet, you love the new recipes, everything's going awesome. But then imagine a few weeks in, things are getting a bit boring, or maybe you're not getting the results you want from the diet. You're buying the food still, you're making the things, maybe you look for a new recipe once in a while, but overall, you're not happy with it. What would you do in that situation? Would you keep doing the diet? Or would you find something else that works a bit better for you? I think most rational people would say, yeah, no, I wouldn't stick to that diet. So why do YouTubers constantly put themselves in these boxes where they say, no, this is what I committed to and I'm gonna stick to it no matter what. To bring this fully back to YouTube, 
What I'm saying is there are so many channels that start out really strong and they stick to a schedule and they make this type of content that they're really excited about. But when they don't get the results they want to see, but they promise themselves they're going to stick to the schedule, they kind of just start uploading for upload's sake. Well, I said I was going to post Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so I had better post Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or else I'll be letting myself and everyone down. This ends up hurting the content as well as your mental health. It's also completely meaningless if you're going to sacrifice time making videos that aren't working based on the hope that maybe one of them possibly will take off. So this goes back to what I talked about earlier with planning your content ahead of time, those first 10 to 20 videos. If you're gonna keep a very strict schedule like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then it does help to have a couple videos in advance just ahead of you so that if you need a break, you can take a break. And if you're making videos and finding that this just isn't working like I thought it would, it's also important to allow yourself to stop and then take a week or two to start researching what you could be doing a little bit better. Because your audience is going to feel that lack of energy and passion in the videos you're uploading at a certain point. Real consistency only happens if you give yourself time to recharge your creative batteries and also come up with engaging ideas for videos. If you can follow those first four steps, you will have a solid foundation in place and you can focus on your next goal, which will be probably monetization. With the right strategy behind your channel, it is possible to unlock monetization in as early as 28 days. We've seen it happen. We talk about it right here.